my god. <laughs> Hey everyone, I've been watching these VR accidents lately. As you can see, people truly believe there's actually a, a physical object right in front of them. I must admit, this has happened to me. Well, maybe not this extreme. But you know what? It just leaves me wanting even more from VR. There are actually companies out there that are trying to resolve these issues by providing the space and the actual physical objects that represents what players are seeing in VR. For example, companies like Dreamscape Immersive or The Void. Definitely check out these places when you can. Obviously, not many of us can have that personal space at our home, and it can be somewhat clumsy when setting up VR equipment like your external motion tracking sensors that tracks your body when you're moving around in a VR environment. Now, that process has actually been simplified with wireless VR headsets like the Oculus Quest. There's already built-in sensors or cameras within the headset where you no longer have to set up external sensors. It actually sees and remembers the room once you define the virtual space, but I must admit there are times you have to redefine your space again because it doesn't always recognize the room. Also by defining the space, it does create a virtual guardian, meaning if the person was in a VR experience and if they are too close to the virtual border that the users defined in the room, a blue grid line will show up indicating you're about to maybe hit a wall. But if your hand were to move too quickly during gameplay, you will simply bang your hand or controller against the wall even before you even see the blue grid line. But don't get me wrong, it still does help in certain situations. So when it comes to moving around in VR, it's not always required to have a large space because through the use of control you can teleport from various locations within the experience or you can simply move around by using the controllers. But there are other solutions that companies have developed besides using these controllers that can increase immersion in VR. Some of you have seen the movie Ready Player One and this omnidirectional treadmill. But just in case you have not seen the movie, it's a 360 degree treadmill where a person can physically walk or run in all directions that is made specifically for virtual reality. So the whole goal is to have people move in the VR environment while remaining safe in a confined area without needing a larger space. Now, as you can imagine, this piece of tech can be pricey and it's only for commercial use for now. But on eBay, some sellers are actually selling this VR treadmill for $1,500 to $3,000. So in case you can't afford the VR treadmill, there's another thing that we can take a look at. It's called cyber shoes. So instead of standing, you sit on a swivel bar stool with your cyber carpet that is anti-static that's supposed to improve on the performance of these cyber shoes. So the goal with these shoes is having the user run, walk, and even jump in place without having too much difficulty moving in VR. The good thing with this piece of tech, it's much more affordable than the VR treadmill. It's about $200 but it's limited to only certain VR games like Rec Room or Doom or Fallout. It currently supports 30 plus games in VR. I honestly prefer the treadmill version because it feels and looks a little bit more natural. But again, the treadmill option can be very expensive and can be bulky for personal use. So hopefully the VR treadmill can be downsized one day and have consumer friendly price points in the future. Now, like I said earlier, VR is so immersive that sometimes users even feel like they can almost touch the things in VR. So this is where haptic gloves come into play. Essentially what that is, it provides the user a sense of touch in VR through the use of these gloves. We kind of have that haptic sensation while holding a controller. For example, if you shoot or pull an arrow back, you might get some feedback through vibrations, but it's not exactly what you feel in real life when you're doing these things. So a company called Haptex developed these gloves to create a much better VR experience for the user. These gloves let users feel virtual textures by embedding in these little air pockets into the gloves to provide realistic touch sensations across the hand. For example, when you pick up something, it pushes pockets of air in certain areas of the hand which creates impressions of touching and holding the object. Currently, these gloves are meant for things like training, medical rehab, so unfortunately it's not for consumer use or at a consumer price point. But the company does plan to expand to the consumer market eventually. Now you know if there's haptic gloves, there's haptic suits. The main character Wade in Ready Player One had a haptic suit which basically is a wearable device that provides a touch sensation or haptic feedback to the body while inside virtual reality environment. Essentially it lets you touch and feel VR. A company called the Tesla suit which by the way has also the haptic gloves has developed a haptic suit. It can transfer sensations from VR to the human body through electric impulses controlled by another control unit. It can deliver a wide range of sensations such as touch, wind, water, and heat. What's actually interesting about the suit, it can actually gather biometric data when someone is in training such as emotional states or stress levels. And of course it can record motion capture of how the body interacts with the VR environment. And if you're wondering how much the suit costs, you can get a quote from the website. 
Currently, it's only released for enterprise training and government services. It's not yet for consumer use, but it will be in the future. Another element that VR needs to definitely develop is realistic avatars of the users. Right now, some avatars look like this in VR social application or games and other educational application. Imagine if you can actually see the person's face and facial expression when we're interacting with one another in VR. I can see where the medical industry can definitely use this type of technology when assessing a patient remotely, similar to telemedicine where physicians can see the patient via video conferencing like using the Zoom healthcare application. Fortunately, Facebook is working on realistic face tracking. Check this out. Here of two of my colleagues working on this problem, communicating with each other in VR, and this is what they would look like when they see each other in VR. Uh, <laughs> what do you do for exercise? Um, I like I oh so I I do yoga and then I do <sighs> boxing too. What kind of and yoga? Wait, okay, yeah. yoga and boxing. Yeah, <laughs> there's a nice contrast yeah. there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So to create these avatars, Facebook uses a capture studio that made up of 32 cameras that points towards the center. After a few hours with a person making a variety of facial expressions, the system then generates a photorealistic face of the user. This data gets used to train AI systems to one day allow users to quickly build their avatars from a few photos or a video. Otherwise, the current method of using specialized cameras won't work with consumers. So one day, perhaps we can use existing photos or videos from Facebook or Instagram to upload ourselves to a custom-made avatar. And as you can see, the result does look pretty impressive. However, Facebook had said this technology is years away from being inside consumers' headset. Just imagine if they can figure out a way to do the rest of our body. Till next time guys, talk to y'all later.